beginnings are difficult. They can also be awkward. And I am given to understand that they are delicate. Know then that this is the first episode in a new mini-series dedicated to the lore of various fantasy and sci-fi universes, detailing all the little details that make them so beloved by fans. Welcome to Brainstorm Lore, and welcome to the Origins of Doom. Now, before I get stuck in, a brief disclaimer. Most of the in-lore events leading up to the first Dune book are briefly described only in reference in the original six books penned by Frank Herbert himself. These events are later expounded upon by Brian Herbert, the author's son, and Kevin J. Anderson in a series of prequel novels. However, there is an ongoing debate in the Dune fandom as to whether or not these prequel books should be counted as canon. One side says yes, they should, while the other side insists that if it wasn't written by Frank himself, it doesn't count. For the sake of compromise, I'm mostly going to restrict myself to the information from the original six books, but where appropriate, I will make the occasional reference to the prequels as a form of possible explanation. With all that out of the way, let's begin. In the far distant future, humanity has discovered a new series of different technologies based on the fictional Holtzman particle. Among these is the ability for humanity to fold space, enabling them to cross vast interstellar distances without that pesky time dilation that occurs when you try to move at faster than the speed of light. Another significant Holtzman-based technology are force fields that can block objects moving at above a certain velocity. This new personal shield technology resulted in rendering all projectile weapons completely obsolete. As a result, once archaic melee weapons like knives and swords once again became the dominant weapons of war. Also by this point, humanity had fully developed artificial intelligence, and over time grew more and more dependent on these thinking machines to do everything for them, because of course, humanity is incurably lazy. However, this over-reliance on technology ultimately sparked off a 200-year-long war known as the Butlerian Jihad. There are conflicting sources as to how this war began. One side claims that the war was spawned by a conviction that humanity's reliance on technology was making them soft and stagnant. Another side asserts that the machines tried to rise up and exterminate humanity a la Skynet. However it began, the Butlerian Jihad ultimately ended with the victory of humanity, the destruction of all computers, and several religious and secular prohibitions against developing any technology of that kind ever again. Another result from the end of the war was the reorganization of humanity into a kind of feudal government, comprised of a parliamentary body of various aristocratic houses known as the Landsrad, ultimately ruled over by an emperor. However, with computers now banned, not only did humanity now have to find a way to collate and organize data all by themselves, but without computers to guide their starships through folded space, interstellar travel was suddenly much more hazardous. The first problem was solved by a man named Gilbertus Albans, who began training certain men to hone their cognitive faculties to near superhuman levels. These men became known as the Mentats and were often used as advisors and counselors by the various noble houses. The second problem was solved by an organization known as the Spacing Guild and their discovery of a small, unremarkable little ball of rock known as Arrakis, a planet so completely covered in sandy desert that it soon garnered the rather obvious nickname of Doom. At this point in time, Arrakis had only two noteworthy features to its credit. The first being that, despite the fact that there was some human habitation, the dominant life form on the planet seemed to be gigantic, highly aggressive sandworms, capable of growing as long as 1,500 feet in length. The second was a mysterious new drug that could be mined from the sands of the planet, known as Spice Melange. And really, it is this, the spice, that makes the Dune universe what it is, more than any other factor. The famous quote, The Spice Must Flow, may have originated with the David Lynch film rather than the original books, 
but it does perfectly and succinctly describe exactly what kind of society exists in the Dune universe and how completely and totally dependent that society is on the spice to function. But of course, I can hear the newcomers asking, what does a drug have to do with running an empire or solving the problem of interstellar travel? Well, aside from extending human lifespan when taken in small doses, the spice, when consumed in larger amounts, boosts certain mental faculties, most significantly prescience and clairvoyance. When taken in even larger doses, the navigators of the Spacing Guild use their heightened faculties to function as living navigation systems, enabling them to safely guide starships through folded space. Unsurprisingly, this resulted in the Spacing Guild acquiring a total monopoly on interstellar travel, to the point where even the Emperor himself is beholden to them. This is the situation in which Paul Atreides, the hero of the first book, finds himself at the beginning of Doom. The Imperial Dynasty, House Carino, has ruled the Empire for over 10,000 years. Besides the many feuding houses of the Landsrat, the School of Mentats, and the Spacing Guild, he will have to contend with many other factions. The highly advanced Ixian Technocracy, the genetic experts and clone masters of the Beni Tleilax, the mysterious desert-dwelling Fremen, native to Arrakis, and finally, the Bene Gesserit, a mysterious sisterhood that, for thousands of years, has manipulated humanity in order to one day produce a being known as the Kwisatz Haderach, a man who can survive the deadly water of life and obtain powers surpassing that of a Bene Gesserit. This man they intend to place on the Imperial throne, and through him, rule the entire galaxy. But that is a story for another time. For now, I must move on to the origin of another famous fictional universe. Next time, the origins of Middle-earth. Until then. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, share, subscribe, and check out my website, studiobrainstorm.net. Studio Brainstorm is a small publishing company looking to reach out to other independent or small-time writers looking to get started. If you have a story worth telling, whether it's a book, comic, novel, or a short story, please contact us. Both email and phone hours are listed on the website. Thank you very much, and have a good day.